السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إن شاء الله تعالى we'll start a new book this is رسالة حسن الخلق by الإمام السعدي رحمه الله حسن الخلق is not just uh, something that people have an idea of if you talk to anyone on the face of earth about good manners they would have some uh, you know things make sense to them but we have unique understanding of husn al this is an act of ibadah to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala part of our deen why am i saying this it means if we did not learn the good manners from the quran and the sunnah of the prophet والسلام, that means we don't have it or we have some some understandings which is in the nature of all human beings human beings are like to be kind they like to be generous all these types of general terms that everybody understands but to be specific as an act of ibadah to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have to learn it and we don't have it till we learn it and then when we learn it we have to apply it otherwise it becomes against us not on our end and we have to, so this is one thing we, it, it's based on ilm based on knowledge and we have to put the time and the effort to learn it and it takes a long time and it needs to be practiced throughout our entire life the other thing is the second point is that we have to make sure that we are mentally prepared to exert ourselves to acquire these manners so first we have to know it that this is what allah wants from us very specific in relationships even and then once we get to know that based on wahi from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then understand that it's not going to be easy it's very easy to lift your hand it's very easy to walk it's very easy to physically go to the masjid and make salah but it's one of the most difficult things is to change a manner that a person has khuluq something that he's been doing or he's upon all of his life nobody taught him nobody sat with him to explain to him what is the deen of al islam says about these types of manners and we all have weaknesses and deficiencies so we have to put the effort and the effort is not going to show its results overnight it's something that takes a while right and it's a lifetime commitment that a person has to change himself and he mentioned that also in the in the risala or in this uh, book by the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, so this is a very important point. The, another thing is that uh, these uh, manners uh, is in relationship with the Tawheed of Allah because it's ibadah. So the Tawheed of Allah, the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the foundation that everything else is built on it. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one that we worship and the Prophet وسلم, is the only one that we follow in the absolute sense. And that should never be contradicted. So we have to be in peace with ourselves and in harmony with what we say. So also everything that we learn, it has to be upon this. Another point is that it's husn uh, al when it comes to the specific situations that we're in. So there are general things that we will discuss inshallah ta'ala over time, of course, not in this, this few, few days. But we will see that it has a level, if it's correct to say, like the fatwa type of thing. That means if you have a situation with your wife or a situation with your a brother in the masjid or one at work, and you don't know how to deal with that person according to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, you might have general terms of what good manners or how to deal, how to be lenient and so on. But that unique situation that you're in, you need the advice of the people of knowledge. So it comes into the level as if it's a fatwa. You're seeking a fatwa from a alim because the fatwa is basically unique to, to, to a situation. What to do in that situation? Might be that you need to forgive this is what is best. Or it might be the best that you seek justice. You know, that you get your rights in that situation. And forgiveness in the sense that you pardon a person, maybe this is not a good idea. Or what the way that maybe this is a, you are in a situation or in times when uh, the, those who are weak and oppressed, maybe it's good to either do one or the other. If it's a, a situation of da'wah. So this is another aspect that this might be a reason for the person to be guided to the deen of Islam versus 
someone else and who are, who is that person so there's so many different things that's why having that knowledge and being close to the people of knowledge and asking them and not just in uh, how to make wudu and how to make salah which is definitely very essential and very important but also to ask the people of knowledge how to acquire these good deeds and how to deal with situations like this in our life and our homes and so on and to be patient with that and we have to if we ask a person of knowledge then we have to apply what they say فسألوا أهل الذكر إن كنتم لا تعلمون as long as you explained it in in the proper way then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to obey them in this regard uh, so these are some of the guidelines and there are more inshallah ta'ala and one of the important things in seeking knowledge that we need to get qawaid or foundations that we can always relate back to it instead of just learning some things that it becomes sometimes difficult to relate things together we'll go through what the uh, sheikh says and uh, yesterday i didn't read what the sheikh says because the time was uh, was tight but inshallah we'll try to read what is said so that we can benefit from it again this is risalat husn al-khuluq by imam al-sa'di rahimahullah he says the first thing uh, you know bismillah rahman rahim kam fi al-kitab wa sunnati min al-nusus al-hathati ala husn al-khuluq how many in the book and the quran and in the sunnah from the nusus from the text al-hatha al-hatha is that encourages entices uh, has so much uh, you know words that gives the virtue of it that encourage the people to be upon husn al-khuluq that statement by itself that means there's so many how many that means so many evidences so many texts about husn al-khuluq al-muthniya ala ashabi that these texts these ayat of the quran hadith of the prophet alayhi salatu wassalam praises the the people of husn al-khuluq al-dhakira ma lahum min al-fada'il wal fawadil that these texts also would mention the virtue of the people with husn al-khuluq with good manners and how virtue they are and how righteous they are and so on وذلك لما اشتملت عليه من الخلق الجميل because the beautiful manners everybody would relate to it and everybody wants to be upon it a very simple question if we ask ourselves and we are sincere even the worst person on the face of earth if he's asked won't you like to have the best manners ever everybody would say yes and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees what's in our hearts so we have to make sure that in our hearts we want to have the best manners this is a sincere sincerity that should be it's seen in our heart not to myself or to your to someone else but to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inna Allah la yanzur ila suwarikum wa la ila ajsamikum walakin yanzur ila qulubikum wa a'malikum Allah does not look at your physical appearance and your bodies but he rather looks at your hearts and your actions so to show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our hearts that we want to have the perfect manners and the only way to do that is that we have to follow Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam not just to make it slogans but we have to really be truthful that we follow the prophet alayhi salatu wasallam when it comes to everything and specifically here with manners and وما يترتب عليهم من المنافع والمصالح العامة والخاصة and what come as a result of that from from the good manners of منافع منافع is the plural of منفعة and المنفعة is the benefit and المصالح المصلحة is also benefit the things that brings good things whether it's general or specific general to the ummah or specific to a person or to a community and so on so uh, that's why there's so many evidences in the Quran and the Sunnah. And Husn al-Khuluq, the entire deen of Islam can be explained from the perspective of Husn al-Khuluq. And this is one of the amazing and miraculous things about the deen of Islam. You find things related, you can talk about the deen of Islam from the perspective of a taqwa. Everything will be included under this. You can talk about the entire deen of Islam from the perspective of al-ikhlas and things like that. And one of which is Husn al-Khuluq. Because as we would see that husn al-khuluq, the foundation of it is the tawheed of Allah because it's husn al-khuluq. At-tawheed is the, is, is the husn al-khuluq. It's the good man is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's the creator, the sustainer. So when people associate partners with Allah, that's bad manners. There's nothing worse than this. The worst manners ever that a human being can do is to be unjust and to have jihud, to deny the favors of Allah. There's nothing more ignorant than this. If you have a human being to a human being, he, a human being saved your life 
uh, and you had nothing, no food, no drink, no shelter. He, and you were uh, certain that you will die. He saved you from death and he gave you food and drink and he uh, sheltered you and he would give you all kinds of things, you know, for a long period of time. And then after that, you turn around and you, uh, you, you do something bad to that person or you're not grateful to him. Is there anything worse than man is that a person can do that? And that's a human being that is in need. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of all things. Every breath we take is owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those who are upon shirk, they are uh, the worst of manners they have because they're not worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And the same thing when it comes, but in a different category, the sins, disobeying Allah is bad manners with Allah. So fulfilling the deen and knowing the rights of Allah, this is good manners. And the good manners with the Prophet والسلام, to obey him, to follow his way والسلام, to have that concern and if a person has this, then Hustul Khuluk with the people becomes the easiest part of it. Because the, really the heart is prepared, is uh, purified to do things only for the sake of Allah. Not for the sake of pleasing people or not because of this is the norm in nowadays. And akhlaq or the manners that used to be 50 years is not, the, is not present now and then people would redefine things. No, it never changes. So that's why these great benefits, because of that, it's all over the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. ﷺ. But what if what is one of the best fawaid or the best benefit of Husnul Khuluq? He says, Famin Ajalli Fawaidi, Imtithalu Amrillahi wa Rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa The one of the best benefits of it is that you are obedient to Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa we talk about husn and khuluq because uh, things are not going well in our homes or in our masajid, whatever. Why do we need to have husn and khuluq? Is a part of being obedient to Allah. So this is the purpose of our life. And that's what makes a person have good manners. Again, not that he's waiting for something in return in this life. He's being with good manners because this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded. And that's again, so it's ilm. So you submit yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will be asked about what Allah commanded you with husn al-khuluq regardless of what these human beings are. And everyone in this life is a test for whoever they interact with or they don't even interact with. We're all test to one another. And we are tested by other individuals and it's all by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is one of the great benefits. وَلَاكْتَدَاءُ بِخُلُقِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمِ الْعَظِيمِ and an act of worship is that you always follow the manners of the Prophet والسلام, in a constant way. So this is to be obedient to Allah and His Messenger Number one. Number two is to follow the way, the manners of the Prophet والسلام, which is by itself is an act of ubudiyah to Allah. And that husn al-khuluq in itself is a great ibadah. Is a ibadah in itself. Not something else, not uh, uh, social relationships. This is ibadah in itself. But one of the unique things about it, تَتَنَاوَلُ مِنْ زَمَانِ الْعَبْدِ وَقْتًا طويلة. And I think this meaning, many people never pay attention to it. This is a great ibadah. Pay attention to this meaning because to some of you, you maybe never heard it before. This is a great ibadah that it takes a long period of time to achieve. What is the meaning of that? Think of someone that you are commanded to have husn al-khuluq with, which is everybody, right? But say, for example, uh, your father and your mother. Your father is one thing, your mother is another thing. Parents, of course. How long you lived with your parents? How long your parents live while you're alive? You know, that both are living at the same time. Years, the ibadah of bir al the ibadah of being righteous to the parents, it takes a long time. And whether they are present with you physically or they're away from you. So the, the minutes or the hours that you spend every day with your parents, right? This is a, a continuous ibadah. Because you can either be the worst person and commit so much sins while you are with them physically, or you can gain great rewards by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in every situation, there are some guidelines, even if you're not doing anything at home. Right? There is some things to be observed, even to the extent of which that you don't make noise so that they take a nap, for example. I mean, this is an act of awliya to Allah. So it takes a long time. The same thing a husband and wife, how much you spend 
every day, how many hours you spend every day with your, with your wife, for example, right? So this is an act of ibadah to Allah. How many hours a day you spend with, and so on. When you come to the masjid, right, you, you, see each, you see one another, you know, your brother in the masjid, you see him, for example, the five daily salah, each salah, uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes, whatever. So multiply that by uh, five throughout the week. You have two hours that you see these brothers, times whatever. So in the day of judgment, these are hours. This is time that uh, there was ibadat to be observed. And this is what he meant here. So and shows how husn al a person reaches with his husn al uh, in such a level that a person would reach when he's constantly making the night prayer and constantly making salat, making siyam. Because it's a continuous ibadah. So, so this is a continuous ibadah and it takes a long time. Uh, and that always originated from one's heart. And the nasiha, you get rewarded for it. So when you're, for example, sitting in the masjid and you have the concern towards your Muslim brothers in the masjid, you are getting reward for it when you're not doing anything. Just the fact that in your heart, you want what is best for them. Right? Even if it's an enemy, even if it's someone that is deviant, you want what is best for them. This is an action done by the heart. So the, 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 the count of good deeds is, is going, is, is, uh, is adding to one's good deeds. So you'd find that we lose so much in this life when we only narrow the good deeds to some physical actions. Good man is husn al is a great tijara trade with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the hadith, when we hear about it, it's a person who thinks, why, why all of this reward by husn al In al abda la yudriku bi husn khuluqi. The slave of Allah would reach with his husn al ma la yudrikuhu that he would not attain it when he's standing at night and fasting and so on. So this is, it takes a long time. And it takes a long time and he is in raha, he's in delight, he's resting. And he, even that's the case, he gets a great reward. That means it's not that he's standing in salah, praying and so on. No, he's, he's just observing husn al with whoever individuals that he is interacting with or living with in the same house, but right? even if they're not talking to each other, sometimes it's uh, it's the 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 fact that you're listening. It's husn al khuluq. I want to talk about husn al istima'. Just the fact that you have a good uh, good you are a good listening person. You listen to your wife when she speaks. You don't cut her off. You let her speak, as the Prophet sallam would let Aisha radiallahu anha speak. And the same thing for the wife and the same thing for the children. So it doesn't have to be something that is being done. It's uh, something that you would do when you are in state of relaxing and having good time. And you're still getting a great reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a result of the good manners. وَمِن فَوَائِدِهِ أَنَّهُ يُحَبِّبُ صَاحِبَهُ لِلْقَرِيبِ وَالْبَعِيدِ One of the benefits, some of the benefits is that it makes the person with husn al-khuluq loved by those who are close and those who are far away from him. And this is definitely something that is uh, one of the objectives of the deen and the relationship is for people to love each other for the sake of Allah. And it makes the enemy a friend. And it makes the one that is far, at least mentally, becomes near. And one of the great benefits, the da'i ila Allah, the one that calls to Allah, it, he becomes then able and the one that teaches people good, it make him able with, you know, in control of his da'wah. He's able to get his da'wah across to the people because if people, they uh, like a person with his manners, they would listen to him. And as mentioned before, what is the purpose of da'wah? Is to convey the message. That's it. The hearts, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that guides the hearts. But we see clearly why people, they don't listen to us. They're not listening. Why? Because many, many reasons. So once you get someone to listen to what you're saying, and one of the means to do that is with good manners, that he will be then want to listen to what you say. Uh, so this is uh, one of the great benefits. And he brings the people to him with hearts that want to, to know the truth or want to do what is good. And uh, the sad part also that with good manners, sometimes... Evil people, they uh, 
take people away from the straight path because of their manners. Because some people, they get led astray by the attention that they get from evildoers, the youth and companionship and so on. People, they uh, lack this attention, for example, at home. So they found someone else and that someone else will give them attention that they are lacking and then they end up leading them astray. And it's not good manners, it's evil manners. Shaitin, they do these types of things. But it's the appearance of goodness and so on. All of that is to, pre- to prepare oneself and to seek the help from Allah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِ by, It's by the mercy of Allah, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لِنْتَ لَهُمْ You become lenient towards them. And I guess lenient comes from لِنْتَ Lenient, lenient, لِنْتَ uh, And the lean is the softness. As the Prophet ﷺ used to say to the people when they straighten the lines in, lines in the salah, Be soft with the hands of your brothers. Do not make it tight and difficult for them. Do not make it tight and difficult for them. So it's by the mercy of Allah that you have this leniency towards them, towards the companions of Allah. And if you are, uh, fadl, al fadl is the harsh, is the one that frowns and have bad attitude and he has the ghilda in the qalb the heart is having this ghilda or harshness in the heart that means he doesn't care about people he doesn't he looked down upon them he uh, with his heart and as a result of that it shows on his actions if if you are upon this o messenger of allah people that lam faddu min hawlik they will disperse from uh, around you which also has a great meaning here that this leniency comes from Allah. It's by the mercy of Allah. So that's why it's related to the foundation of the deen. And uh, it's, a, it's a gift from Allah that he would give someone this leniency in his heart uh, as it says, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ It's by the mercy of Allah. Uh, and then he says, وَبِالْخُلُقِ الْحَسَنِ وَطُمَأْنِينَةِ الْقَلْبِ وَرَحَتِهِ يَتَمَكَّنُ مِنْ مَعْرِفَةِ الْعُلُومِ الَّتِي سَعَلَ إِدْرَاكِهَا One of the means to achieve knowledge that you want to attain is to do that with husn al-khuluq. Because when someone is having bad manners, he's always disturbed, he's always distracted. This person bothers him, he can't wait till he revenge from that other person, he's going through all kinds of things. So, and with the ilm, you need to have a heart that is uh, empty from all of these types of things so that he would attain what is benefiting. So husn al-khuluq brings to ma'nina, tranquility to the heart that makes the person able to attain the proper knowledge. وَالْمَعَارِفِ الَّتِي يُفَكِّرُ مِنْ تَحْصِلِهَا And the ma'arif, the all kinds of information that he wants to attain. And also وَبِهِ with حُسْنُ الْخُلُقْ يَتَمَكَّنْ الْمُنَاظِرْ وَالْمُخَاصِمْ مِنْ إِبْدَاءِ حُجَّتِ If you have to reach a state where you are debating with someone, or if it happens that you have a dispute with someone, Having disputes doesn't necessarily mean that people have bad manners. This is part of life. You might have disputes with people. But with husn al-khuluq, it gives the person the ability, even if you have a dispute or debating and so on, that he will be able to express his, his position. Uh, you will have a hujja. You will have authority over the other person with ilm, with knowledge, if you have husn al-khuluq. If you have knowledge only, you can lose the battle and you can lose the debate with someone uh, just even though you have more knowledge than him if you have bad manners, if you're not upon good manners. With good men, and this is something that people even see when they look at the two opponents or whatever, if someone loses his temper, even if he's saying what is right, he loses. Right? So, and that's part of husn al-khuluq. So, uh, and he mentioned this here. وَفَهْمَ حُجَّةْ صَحِبِي And also, not just to express your, your point, but also to understand the other side. And it doesn't have to be in, in debate with matters of deen. It can be with the ones that you live with, the husband and wife, for example. Right? If, uh, for a person to have good manners, he put himself into the position of the other. He wants to listen and to uh, be in their position and to understand where they're coming from. And to try to think of it this way, and then he will be able to... All of that with good manners brings what is best. And as a result of that, he, it becomes guidance for him, to be upon what is upright in speech and actions. All of that because of husn al-khuluq, not just because of knowledge, but because of husn al-khuluq. 
وكما أنه سبب لهذين الأمرين في نفسه فهو من أقوى الدواعي لحصولهما لمن خاصمه أو نظر This is also one of the means for these two types of things and the, and the tranquility and the heart and the knowledge and so on It's also one of the very effective means to, uh, to uh, be in the issues of debates and things like this And the hadith of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام إن الله يعطي على الرفق ما لا يعطي على العنف Allah gives uh, for gentleness what he doesn't give with aggression. So uh, gentleness, a person receives so much benefits with gentleness that he won't receive aggr- with aggression. Aggression, you think that you can get what you want immediately. You want someone to stop doing something, so you would physically stop him. right? But if you're gentle and you get him to stop with gentleness, then this is something that is of a, of a, of a long effect and of course each one has its own uh, ways of course uh, also as it says as he says وبالخلق الحسن يسلم العبد من مضار العجلة والطيش this is all benefits right? that a person with good manners he would be safe from the عجلة العجلة is being in haste الطيش is when you do nonsense or you bring harm to yourself and others as a result of being in haste. And to be accurate, of course, I'm not going to say numbers, but think of uh, many of the problems that people have in their life is because of this, because being in haste. How many cases of divorce happens because of this hasty situation? I divorced my you know, person would say he divorced his wife. What do I do now? That means he doesn't want to divorce her, but it happened. And then they try to figure out how to go back to each other again. And it happened once and twice and three times. Right? So why? Because the issue of being in haste. And subhanAllah, as if the deen of Allah that he made the divorce, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the divorce so easy with the word of mouth because human, a Muslim is responsible to that extent. He, he's not supposed to be someone that says anything. We are, we are supposed to be trained and purifying our hearts that the word has value to and a word can take the person to Jannah or a word can take the person to the hellfire. So if a person is like this, he's not going to just say things and doesn't know what he's saying. He has to make sure that he is uh, taking his time to think. And it's very obvious nowadays, even with the times of fitan, al-ajala, or to be in haste, uh, you, might, you might not be able to contain it after you already said it or done it. You know, you can say something in haste to a brother or so, and you regret it and you ask him for forgiveness and things, inshallah, you know, even though sometimes it becomes difficult, but he has to forgive. But nowadays you can be in haste, you get angry, and you write something and you send it. Right? And that's it. You can't bring it back. It's already gone to the east and the west. Right? Or share something crazy. Or, and it's all about being in haste. And one of the foundations of fitan, and that's something, something has to be always repeated, as more than one of the Sahaba and the early generations, they would say that at the early generations, uh, the best among you in his deen is the one that is in haste. Because everything is good. There's no fitan. Right? So uh, this is what is good. Do it. So you rush and you, you do it because you know for sure that this is good. But a time would come at the end of the the best of you in religion is the one that is muta'anni, the one that takes his time, that he does not rush. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to rush into seeking the forgiveness from Allah. Compete with one another, race with one another in matters of forgiveness and to the Jannah. And this is once you know that this is what Allah wants from us. But when it comes to fitan, especially with dealing with people, or what to say, or what to do, and how to act in this situation. Don't be in haste. Right? Take your time. Know what the, the best way to deal with it as the people of knowledge. Things like this. So a time, and this is also with fitan. Should I go to that place or not? Should I deal with these people or not? Don't think that everything sounds good or looks good. It's good. No, don't be in haste. So one of the great benefits of having good manners is that the person will be saved from this. When a person has good manners, he have الرزانة is when someone is um, uh, uh, he's not uh, I guess again, he's not in haste. You know, when people are, they keep on moving from one place to the other. Someone 
For example, he, even in worldly matters, he doesn't know what he wants. Why? Because he's not giving things the proper pace of thinking. So he studies this after some months. Oh, I don't like this. Let me go do something else. And then he do something else. And then he keeps on moving like this. And he end up wasting so many years without doing anything because he get bored quickly. Because he's in haste. He doesn't think of things. He does not take opinions of those who have more knowledge and, and things like this. It's all part of al-ajala. And the same thing, you know, people seek knowledge. Everybody wants a two, three minute type of thing. Uh, they want in haste. They want to know the thing quickly. You know, they don't want to take the time for it. And this is definitely something that takes away so much from the barakah and the blessings of things and the sabr and things like this. Because there are so many different outcomes that comes as a result of it. And you have to, it's, th- it's benefits that you want to attain and harm that you want to push away. And many times it's very complex and it's very difficult. So you have to make sure that you do it in the right way. Also, Abil Khuluq al Hassan, with good manners, he says, يَتَمَكَّ مِنَ الْوَفَاءِ بِالْحُقُوقِ الْوَاجِبَةِ الْمُسْتَحَبَّةِ لِلْأَهْلِ وَالْأُولَادِ وَالْأَخَارِبِ وَالْأَصْحَابِ وَالْدِيرَانِ وَالْمُعَامِلِينَ With good manners, you'll be able to uh, fulfill the rights that is obligatory rights or recommended rights to the family, to the children, to the relatives, to the friends, to the neighbors, to those who you deal with and all of the rest of the people that you have some form of mixing with or rights that they have upon you. فَكَمْ مِنْ حُقُوقٍ أُضِيعَتْ مِنْ جَرَّاءِ سُوءِ الْخُلُوقِ He says, فَكَمْ again, how many, there's so many, how many of rights have been ruined as a result of bad manners? So many events. It's basically, you can say this is the most common reason for rights to be denied is bad manners. And, 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 and that shows the, ev- the evil consequences of it. وَإِنَّ حُسْنَ الْخُلُقْ لَا يَدْعُوا لِصِفَةِ الْإِنصَافِ حُسْنُ الْخُلُقْ Calls the person to have fairness. And that's one of the basic qualities of حُسْنُ الْخُلُقْ. الْإِنصَافِ is to be fair. To be fair is that you like for your brother what you like for yourself. Not that everything is yourself and my benefit and what do I get from this relationship what is the comfort thing for me in this? It's, uh, life is not about this. Life is about being fair to others. And a person would never lose if he would make sure that he wants for others what he wants for himself. It doesn't take anything away from him, especially those who he live with. I mean, these are the people that you're living with, your home and so on. If it's only myself, then it's, it becomes a miserable life. فَإِنَّ صَاحِبَ الْخُلُقُ الْحَسَنِ يَسْلَمُ غَالِبًا مِنَ الْإِنْتِصَارِ لِنَفْسِ To make yourself victorious, this is not good manners. We have to be patient with ourselves. So to always think that I won, I got my way. Uh, this is, you know, everything is about oneself, self-centered, that everything is about himself. This is definitely all of the grounds for bad manners. So when someone is not, his, not his concern is to be victorious or to prove his point, or to get what he wants, if this is not part of what his life is, then many things will be fixed in his life. Because Sahib al Khuluq al Hassan, the one that has good manners, is always safe from al Intisar li Nafsi to make himself victorious. It doesn't matter if the one that is weaker than him is right and he is wrong. It doesn't matter that, you know, the wife. Uh, is right and he's wrong. It doesn't matter that if his son is right and he's wrong. It's not going to make them in a better position or uh, that you lose your haiba, your respect, your honor, that they won't listen to you anymore because you're wrong and they were right. This is all from the whispers of shaitan. And on the other side of those who think that they were right and the other side is are wrong, that means they lose respect to those who are wrong. This is also evil and bad manners. So good manners is when the person, his goal is to attain what is right. It doesn't matter if it comes from someone that under his authority or someone above him, it does, as long as the haq, the truth is there. And we all uh, should be seekers of the truth, regardless whether it comes from me or, or yourself. As Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah and others, these people, they were noble because of the deen of Islam. He said, Ma nadartu ahadan. I never debated with anyone. Unless I would wish that the haqq comes on his tongue, you know, not necessarily from myself. 
So when people debate, they make even as a contest of this, right? Who wins gets the prize. This is un-Islamic concept, right? The concept is we want the haqq to come out if there has to be a debate. The concern is the haqq. Whether the haqq comes from this side or that side, as long as the haqq, the absolute haqq comes as a result of that, this is what we, we're all seeking. Uh, so this is the issue of al-intisar lin-nafs, what ta'assub, to be prejudiced about something. This is husn al-khuluq, cleans all these things away. لِأَنَّ الْإِنْتِصَارَ لِلنَّفْسِ وَالتَّعَصُّبْ يَحْمِلُ عَلَى الْإِعْتِسَافِ وَعَدَمَ الْإِنْصَافِ When you're always concerned about yourself, that you want yourself to, you're the one that is right and things like this, makes the person not fair whatsoever. We see that clearly. Someone prejudiced about his, even his sheikh or his madhab or this or that, he's blind to see any faults and he sees the faults of others and he would not want, he doesn't want to listen even. Why? Because of this arrogance and this uh, unfairness that he has. And that's why those who have this, they are more likely to be guided than others. And you'd see that even in the lives of those who embraces Islam and things like this. They have this in them, they have that seed of being fair. You know, they, uh, they have this in themselves, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide. When the sahib al-khuluq, he says, al-hasan fi rahatin hadiratin wa na'imin ajil. One of the great benefits of husn al that you are in a present, in this life, raha. Raha is uh, relaxing, is that you're, you're, you're not uh, stressed or anything like this. And uh, an immediate delight in this life. فَإِنَّ قَلْبَهُ مُطْمَئِنُّ وَنَفْسُهُ سَاكِنَ His heart is in tranquility. And the whispers of shaitani tells you that it's going to be the opposite. But many things, it's not from you. Which is another meaning, wallahi, if we keep on repeating this meaning, uh, it's it's very benefiting because we tend to forget it. You don't have the capacity to bring about results as a human being. Your capacity as a human being is to fulfill the command of Allah. And that's it. So relax. Results is not in your hands. You just take the perfect means to perfect the commands of Allah and Allah, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you. And leave the matter to Allah. You will see, you will see amazing things. You would get what you don't expect, as long as you rely upon Allah Subhanahu wa Taala like this. I was mentioning yesterday the the parents they and I would want to repeat this meaning many times. Inshallah, the question that always comes up: If I take the phone from my child, what do I give him in in return, or what's the alternative? We have to do something. Or if I don't send my child to this party or birthdays, they would feel that they are less than others. So what is the alternative of this? We always think that we have to have an alternative to what people are doing, which is wrong. Right? We have alternatives, of course. I'm not saying that this is something completely to be avoided. But the, the, the basics of all of this is what? Is fulfill the commands of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open ways that you do not expect. Right? And uh, and for example, Maryam alayhi salam, when uh, she was devoted in worship, right? She was not, no fun or no entertainment or anything like this, right? She was devoted in her mihrab, in her ibadah. When her mother, she made the dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her a child to be in the service and it was a female, not male. And so she was devoted in her ibadah. And uh, what happened as a result of that? She would never ever expect that uh, she would get all kinds of provisions as a result of this. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَكُلَّمَا دَخَلَ عَلَيَّ زَكَرِيَّ الْمِحْرَبَ وَجَدَ عِنْدَهَا رِزْقَةً قَالَ يَا مَرْيَمُ أَنَّا لَكِ هَذَا قَالَتْ هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ يَرْزُكُ مَا يَشَابُ وَيَا حِسَبُ Every time he entered on al-mihrab, the place of salah that she's in, he find rizq by Maryam. Fruits of the winter in the summertime. Fruits of the summertime in the winter time there. He would say, أَنَّا لَكِ هَذَا Where did you get that from? She said, هو من عند الله. It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah provides to whoever he wills without uh, an account whatsoever. So was someone like Maryam alayhi salam miserable? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, provided for her. But the concept of it is uh, rectify or be righteous with what's between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will suffice for you. Uh, all of these physical needs and, and fun and all of these types of things. It will be 
uh, more pleasant than what you think. Far more uh, goodness than what the, the evil ones are doing. And that's why uh, truly, yani, but those who rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their life of being pleasant is far more, not, not even in comparison with those who have uh, or so-called fun life of following their desires. And that's what uh, the early generations of Islam, when they said, لَوْ يَعْلَمُوا الْمُلُوكُ وَأَبْنَاءَ الْمُلُوكُ If the kings and the sons of the kings, they know what we are in, they would fight over this by swords. If they know how much uh, delight that we have, they would try to fight us with swords to get it. But you can't. This is not money that they can take or it's, it's not something physical. It's in the hearts. And this is the, the owner of the hearts is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So nobody has control of your heart except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as a rule is that if you want something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you seek the pleasure of Allah. And you rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make in your heart what the entire world, if they know what's in it, they would fight to get it and they won't be able to get it. It's not about just the physical means. But the lack of knowledge and the al-ajala, the, 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 to be in haste and, and having less ability to think, even as we, we complain about that ourselves or the youth, what is the most thing is concerning to someone just finished childhood and is in the beginning of his adolescent years. He wants money. He wants uh, status. He wants physical things. This is what uh, it appeals to him. Why? He needs to have the patience and the ilm uh, to know that this is not the most fun thing in this world. And people continue to be like this with ignorance. But if they fulfill the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would see that the matter is much uh, you know, more beautiful than this. And as Ibn Hazm, rahimahullah, in his book of Mudawatul Nufus, very beautiful in the beginning, he writes in it the, the, the gist of his experience and his hikam and things like this. The first, one of the first things that he says, that لا يعرف حكم أو كذا الشيئين إلا من ذاقهما or more or less, that means that for you to be able to judge or to know which is good of two things, the one that knows this is the one that knows the taste of two things, both of them. But if you taste one thing and not the other, you won't be able to judge the other thing. Like if someone is asked which is, what tastes better, watermelon or uh, cucumber, for example, right? If you didn't taste both, you won't be able to judge, right? So who's the one to be judged is the one that tasted both. So he, he was saying this, why? He says the people of the deen and those who are close to Allah in the right way, those who repented to Allah versus those who are, uh, you know, following their desires and this lives and sins and so on. Who is the one to be asked about which is more pleasant? Uh, the righteous ones, because they know exactly what it feels to be physically uh, following one's desire. But the other ones, they don't know what it means to be a repentant slave to Allah and a righteous one. So uh, they are not to be the, the one to be asked, but rather the ones that are righteous and so on. So this is the delight that a person would have and the raha and the pleasant. So uh, yes, we should find alternatives and things like this. No problem as long as it's in the proper way. But we have to be careful because many of these alternatives are only a step uh, before the evil step. right? So they, they make it seem... Like, for example, you know, some of the cartoons, for example, they, they make things for the, for the children, but it's, it's of less quality, big time, than the other ones. And it's very close to the other one. So when the kids see it, it's, it's, you know, it takes them to the, to the evil one sometimes. So it, it has to be done in the proper way that you don't get them closer. Or someone says, I don't want to listen to music, so let me listen to Nasheed. Or let people listen to Nasheed because others are listening to music. So they would listen to the Nasheed, the Nasheed, and then they go to the music. It's a step closer, right? And it's uh, what happened 50 years ago. People not having fun, not enjoying themselves. The enjoyment all of a sudden uh, popped up in this, in this generation that we live in. The same thing with the internet and so on. There's so much goodness in this life, but we are so much trapped by what being mandated upon us, which may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us, inshallah. We have still time? No. So he says, كَمَا أَنَّ سَيِّ الْخُلُقِ 
في شقاء حاضر the bad the one with bad manners he's always in a constant misery and and when he's out of here or Baltini even if you don't see it in himself but he's always in a struggle between his outside appearance and his inward actions and with with his heart مع نفسي وأولادي with himself with his children and those who mixes he mixes with his time he that's why he always keep, keeps on being in ghafla in forgetfulness and many of the good things will be missed and as the prophet sallallahu said in al abda la yudrik bi husni bi khuluqihi la aw la yudrik bi husni khuluqihi darajat al saim al qaim that the slave of allah would reach with his husn al khuluq the level of the one that is fasting and the one that is making the night prayer uh, then he says fa in qult if you say إذا كان حسن الخلق له هذه الفضائل والأثار الحسنة فهل للإنصاف به أسباب يتمكن العبد من فعلها وهو مجرد موهبة If حسن الخلق is as we heard of just general terms like this of how beautiful it is is فهل للإنصاف به is to acquire these good manners is there other means to attain it or it's just a gift from Allah Why this question is being addressed here? Because many people, they think is husn al-khuluq is something that is just a, a person has good manners versus a bad manners because this is how his nature is. And uh, definitely this is not the case. Some people are, are raised or born with some qualities. That's by the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet والسلام, said to one of the companions, Sajjid Nabi Al-Qais, إِنَّ فِيكَ خَصْلَتَانِ يُحِبُّهُمَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُ You have two qualities that Allah and His Messenger وسلم, loves. Al-hilm wa al-ana. Forbearance and al-ana. Al-ana is what we're talking about, that you're in, not in haste. So this is something that was in him without him acquiring it. It's given to him. He's, he has it. So this is uh, the bounty of Allah. But does it mean that those who don't have it, uh, then they have an excuse? No, because they have to attain it. So if you are given one of these qualities, and each person has something, You know, people are, a person might be given ease to be patient in something than others. Someone, generosity is easier for him than others. Things like this. And I was also the way that our upbringing and the environments that we're in, things like this. You know, some people, when they live a rough life, they are rough. Like they become with roughness in dealing with people. Is that an excuse to continue that way? No, it's not an excuse. They have to change and to learn the deen of Allah. So he says, uh, when the more we hear about husn al-khuluq and the uh, text, you want to be upon these types of matters. So he says, فَلَمَّا اشْتَقَتِ الْقُلُوبِ When the hearts would yearn to want to be upon good manners, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated for the people في بيان الأسباب. He made it very clear to them the means that would help the person to be upon husn al-khuluq. And again, when we say husn al-khuluq, this is a very general term. That's mentioned in the hadith like this, that comes under it many things. And these many things, if you have some and some not, you won't be able to be among those who have husn al khuluq. Right? So if someone is generous and have patience or uh, whatever he kinds to others and so on and so forth, but then when he's angry, he acts so foolish. This can ruin all of these good qualities. So husn al khuluq, and that's why the exerting oneself. It's the whole package. Is, is all of these actions has to be applied. So, uh, therefore, we have these means. This is a very important aspect that every Muslim should be upon uh, that to be uh, in, in this matter. So, then the answer, he says, There is no good quality, whether it's outside uh, physical action or something inwardly in one's heart, Allah had made it easy for the person to attain it. So if it's a good quality that we have in the Quran and the Sunnah, that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it easy for people to attain it. And he made the path to it very clear. And if you take that, that, that mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you with all means. الصفات, and the more the attributes or the characteristics are perfected, the more these qualities are great, the more that you would find many different paths to it, which is part of the ease that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. 
مع أن الغرائز والطبائع الأصلية أعظم العون عليها even though ones innate makes it in one of the great means to achieve it we all want to be just we all want to be good and so on وصاحبها إذا سعى لها أدنى سعى أدرك مراده and the least amount of effort a person would attain his uh, his end result إن شاء الله تعالى so but we have to put the mujahada and the effort to alladhina jahadu fina lanahdiyannahum subulana those who struggle in our path we will guide them to our path so uh, having that concern and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it and as it will come there's the dua making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then we seek the knowledge of it and there is a dua of the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam and the hadith is sahih as a general dua and it's not sahih it's not authentic uh, in what people related to looking at the mirror there's a what do you say when you look at the mirror Allahumma hassan khulqi kama hassanta khalqi this is weak the weak part of it is that if you look at the mirror but the dua is authentic so dua is a general dua which is authentic the prophet sallallahu used to say that but not when he look at the mirror just in general so, but if it happens that you look at the mirror, you see yourself, and you say, Allahumma hassan khuluqi, kama hassan ta khalqi, mashallah, don't believe that this is related to looking at the mirror. But the dua means, oh Allah, Allahumma hassan, oh Allah, make the goodness, my manners good, the same way you made my looks good. Right? And everybody looks good. There's no one that doesn't look good, because this is the creation of Allah. And Allah created each one the way that He created him. And he tested him with whether he looks according to people or according to those who live with him, good or not good. This is by the wisdom of Allah. And sometimes what people define as good can be a misery for the person. Like Yusuf alayhi salam, his good looking, he's, he was given half of the beauty, was the reason for him to be in prison for seven years. Right? And that's the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it's, uh, you know, we don't know what's best for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created each one with what is best for him. And everything is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the dua, to make dua to Allah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us uh, good manners because it's all from Allah. I guess it's time for uh, the salah. We'll stop here, inshallah. All of that is related to what needs to be at home, inshallah. Uh, so that it's not just halal and haram and things like this, but this is the foundation of it, inshallah. صلى الله وسلم وبارك على محمد وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله